everybody. Welcome once again. My name is Chimizi. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for joining us. This is Papa's Heart Ministry, and on this platform, we share everything about God's Word for His people at this time and every season. Thank you so much once again for joining us. In this episode, we have had a um, series of episodes talking about um, a book review. I don't know if you've heard about it, but this is your first time. It's a book review about this book, Armed and Dangerous. It's about the author John and Lewis. Now, this book was actually published in 2017, and it's basically talking about spiritual warfare. There are many things that happen in our lives that we do not know, we do not understand why certain things are happening in our lives, in our family, in our homes, in our community, and we just see different patterns and cycles. It has happened with my great grandfather, with great grandparents, it happened in the time of our grandparents, it happened in the time of our parents, now it's happening in the life of our own lives, and now in time, maybe in the lives of children, they are going to see some patterns coming up, and you don't understand the reason why these things are happening. Now, this is the reason for the purpose of this series. Is to, is to basically share some basic insight or basic um, points that I believe that the Spirit of God wants us as His children of God and even unbelievers to be mindful that these are the ways that the devil uses to gain access into any individual lives. Now, if you have read this book, perhaps you are able to pick out some things. But if for any reason you have read it and you do not, and you are not able to identify certain things, now, the reason why the Spirit of God put in my heart to, to do this review is that many believers, many people would have read it, but they are still not able to identify certain things that would have given the, the enemy access to their lives and to their families. So, this review basically is to help everyone who comes across this book, who gets this book. It's called Armed and Dangerous um, by John Ramirez, he's an evangelist. And um, it's for you to be able to identify this little bit. So, in any area of your life, in the life of your children, your, your spouse, your family members, in your business, in your relationship, when you see these patterns begin to show up, then you understand that these are the way that the enemy is trying to gain access to your life. And then you gain wisdom. You are reading this book. There are prayers in this book. There are, there are strategies in this book that teaches you how to repent of those things, how to renounce them and how to keep yourself away from such things. So today we're doing this is going to be about the season four of this review and we are reading actually chapter four of this and chapter four talks about a subtle infiltration. Here yeah, it talks about a subtle infiltration. Now I have read this book or I have read it and I, and the Lord has really blessed my heart with it. But today, as I read, as I read through, when I read through this particular chapter, um, it, it resonates with something that is happening recently, even in the world, in social media, and it's something that is even um, something recently that happened to a family member. Now, here the, the author talks about, he talks about it. There are so many subtle, the subtle ways that the enemy comes into the lives of the individual. Here he talks about the same chapter one. I asked, I asked believers why. Why, why believers in Jesus have been taking have been taking such a pounding by forces of darkness? Stepping back and even bigger question might be how did the church come to be so important? How did we get to this place of weak need Christianity? So for centuries the, the church has been in such a way that they do not have idea, they do not know what to do, how to deal with spiritual attacks, how to deal with spiritual patterns and cycles that the enemy ways and many seem to use as access point into the lives of, the, of individuals. Now, if you see here, one of the things that he, that he mentioned in this, in, this, in, this, uh, in this chapter here, he mentioned, he, say, he says here, that he says, fast forward to few decades, we are reading from page 46, just the, 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 the fourth paragraph, and he says here, he says, fast forward to a few decades, and already what started as a pure, on fire church have been infiltrated by the devil to water down the gospel and pull people from the from the truth of Jesus Christ. Today we find ourselves in the same predicament. But a remnant is rising up, praise the Lord, the end time church of Jesus Christ, and we thank God that many remnants, many people in Christ Jesus are building up to get to the point where the Lord can use them to do great things for their family. Because the Lord doesn't just want to have people in ministry or 
on the pulpit, God wants to have them planted in individual homes so that with that you're able to know what you can do. And that is why this that's why this platform is here. So you as an individual in your business, in your home, you can learn something. Perhaps it's something that you have noticed going on. But I pray that through this platform, as you are learning, you will see things that you will be able to identify in your spirit, or the Holy Spirit will be able to, or the Holy Spirit will be able to identify things in your heart that have been going on. So you can have ideas or wisdom and knowledge of the Spirit of God to know how to deal with these things. Now, in verse 40, in page 47, this is one of the ways that the devil has been infiltrated. One of the things that he talked about, he said, he says, spiritual warfare and deliverance are things that the devil fights desperately against. He knows that if you have if you have understanding of spiritual warfare, if you have understanding of deliverance, now many people think deliverance is only just people who are possessed. Deliverance is basically for someone who has given their lives to Christ, someone who has come into Christ. You need deliverance from things that are no longer that are not meant to be part of your life anymore. And then he also expresses here, he said, the church has lost its discernment. The children of God have lost discernment. Many have fallen in love with the gift instead of the presence of God. Many people do not care about having the presence of God. They just want to know that, oh, I'm able to do this. I'm able to um, do this, do this ministration. I'm able to preach. I'm able to talk. I'm able to do that. The focus is to keep your mind on the presence of the Lord, having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. These are ways by which you can block out access of the enemy into your life. And by that, I'm not just talking about you spending time to pray. You can pray, you can fast, you can give your time, you can go to church. But if you do not have one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Holy Spirit, you do not have one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him. And how do you do that? By spending time in His Word. And I don't mean just come and just preach through the Bible and then go. No, you have to get time that you alone. Spending time studying with the word because Bible makes us to understand that the word of God is like what water is to our spirit. So when you spend time studying the word of God, the word of God does not only just I would say it is sharper than every two edged sword. It is able to get into the bone, to your bone, to your mouth. The word of God knows things in your life on its own. It has power on its own. Just reading one line, one word, one verse in that in the Bible is enough. The Bible says it's, it's like it's water that washes our it's like water that is water word of God is like it's what it washes our, our body, our spirit. The same way we you we take use water to wash our hands and to have our bath or to wash our face. The word of God is God's water that washes our spirit. So what the word of God does is when it goes into your spirit, it searches anything, any patterns, any cycles, anything in the family lineage, in the family ancestry that is not meant to be there and it begins to take care of those things because the word of God has life in itself. So the more you study God's word, you, the, the more the presence of God fills your life, fills your mind. You may find that you are always having thoughts, thoughts that are not supposed to be of God, maybe sexual thoughts, maybe thoughts of, of, of death, thoughts of suicide. Things that are happening, those are patterns and cycles. You find out that you begin to see the call it schizophrenia. That those things are demonic. Now the now scientists have given it name, thinking that it's just a, a, a just a um it's just a, a medical condition. Actually, it is a spiritual thing because when you understand things of the spirit, you know that these things are not of the spirit of God. The God of the Bible says the blessings that are good and not of evil. He will not give you a life that will then bring demonic activities into it. The devil comes to pull those things to tell you, oh, your family member is expressing this um, disorder, this particular disorder, it is there in the family name. Those are patterns and cycles that the enemy uses to gain access. So you need to spend time to pray, spend time in the word of God. The word of God cleanses, cleanses you. I always like to pray, say, Lord, Wash me with the water of your word and with the blood of your soul, Jesus Christ, because that is what the word of God does. It washes your soul, it washes your spirit, it washes any it washes anything that is not of God in your life and cleanses you from everything. So now here he says because the devil is comfortable with people just preaching about other things. One of the things that I noticed when I was reading this is that the, the devil is comfortable with people just preaching about other things as long as it does not involve spiritual warfare and deliverance from demons. You see, you go to churches and that's why you must be careful. Any place, any church, any ministry, or any platform that you are listening to and they're not telling, teaching you about spiritual warfare and they're not teaching you about 
deliverances. You must be careful because there are things in all our individual lives that have opened doors to Satan and satanic activities through, through things that we watch, things that we listen to, through places that we ate, we went to eat, restaurants that we went to eat, you do not know who cooked the food, marketplaces that you visited, it can be people that you slept on the same bed, it can be friends that you had that have opened up soul ties, blood ties, can be gifts that you collected, gifts that you gave out, these things are open doors, access points that the enemy can use to anybody's life, it can be clothes, jewels, if you listen to the other previous series, I mentioned things that the enemy uses, now one of the reasons why this spiritual warfare is important is that the need for spiritual discernment is so important. You know, so because with this you're able to discern. Now let me give an example here. I'm reading from, from page page 48 here. This author was talking about the, this what many people know it as ice bucket challenge that, that, that people do all around the world. But well, he is able to testify in this book that this is actually a ritual that only specified people are allowed in the demon in witchcraft societies to be able to carry it out as part of their rituals to be able to give up to different ones. And guess what? Many people are doing this all around the world. Many people use it. That's why you must be careful. You see people going to the different parties or they say all dressed in white or dressed in a particular way, a touch of white. Or you do not know the reason why they say that. You think, oh, it's just a normal thing that goes on in society. Or you don't know that perhaps there is a spiritual demonic thing attached to it. That is why you must be very careful as a child of God, as an individual, because when you get yourself involved in those things, you open the door to satanic patterns and cycles, and the devil latch on to those things to destroy the life of your children, your marriages, your business, your finances, every area of your life. And especially if you are not a child of God who spends time praying, who spends time in the word of God, then you do not know what to do. Here he talks about a young man trying to raise money for a friend in need, started a challenge in the world. And really, did anyone take notice or investigate the spirituality behind it? There are so many things, even in churches today, so many churches they go about having some things, but you do not know what they are doing. I have attended churches that they do so many things, but the Lord opened my eyes by His Spirit and by His mercy. And I say that before the altar, there is actually a stone altar. And the Lord is telling you, you need to leave this place. So that's why you must be careful. Which, who do you listen to? Who are you Who are you working with? What ministry are you getting involved in? Because the Holy Spirit needs to open your eyes. You need to have spiritual discernment. Otherwise, your, your family, your own life, just being present there is an expression of satanic activities. I do businesses as, as an educationist. But guess what? There are some people in my business that the Lord has said to me, do not go into partnership with this company. Do not go into partnership with these people. Or do not even visit their offices. Because I have visited offices, even people's homes. And in their homes, they put up things that are, that are actually idols. The minute you come in there, there is an interaction because those demons will want to have transactions with your life. And if you as an individual, you are not spiritually guarded by the word of God, by the presence of the Holy Spirit, by the word of God and prayer that brings the presence of the Holy Spirit, your spirit, your entire destiny and life can actually be turned to tamper with in such places. That is why you must spend time with the word of God because the word of God has secret details that on your own you will not know. I have learned whenever I want to study God's word, I ask Holy Spirit, open my understanding. Show me the deep things that in this scripture that I do not know. Maybe I have even read it before and I do not understand. So I learned to study the word of God. And then he talks, he talks extensively about the ice bucket challenge. How this ice bucket challenge destroys the lives of many. And guess what? That is not the only thing that happened today. You know, recently, while I was reading it and trying to prepare for this, while I was trying to read it and trying to prepare for this, the Lord just brought to my attention. Recently, now on, on, on YouTube, on YouTube, while you are watching, you know how you have the social media ads. Yes, so um, one of the social media ads came up, and I, I noticed that it has come up severally. And it's about you see somebody just come up and say, Oh, sometime in my life, my father and my mother we used to go through a lot of challenges. We were poor, things were difficult, people didn't like us, things bad were happening, bad, bad, bad things were happening to us. Or, 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 except for one day, somebody introduced a bracelet, a bracelet, that is what they call it. And say, so By the time you see the bracelet, the bracelet began to walk off wrong, wrong, wrong spirits, wrong, wrong things. 
And what is the bracelet made of? It is made of leaves that involve Buddha and too many other kind of idols that are attached to it. Guess what? A lot of people have seen that and still thought to themselves, oh, perhaps this thing can help me. Let me tell you something. The devil does not give anything without taking something back. In fact, he doesn't really give anything. He takes everything from you if you are not if you, if you do not know. The devil does not really give anything. Whatever you think you have gotten from him, he has taken every other thing that you think you have from you. Now, such person, the minute you put on such bracelet on your arm, the minute you come in contact with it, the minute you type, you click on their on their on their page to go have, you have already opened the door to the demon spirit behind that. Let me tell you this: this is a demonic attempt of Satan to come into your home, to come into your life. Many people will not say they have made it seem like oh it's okay, just a bracelet when you put it on and then uh, what kind of what spirit is behind it? Have you ever wondered what spirit is it? The spirit of the name of Jesus. If it is not the name of Jesus, then you know it is a demonic spirit behind it. And when and those 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 um, those um, those 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 what is it called again? Those um, those symbols of on those bracelets. What are they meant for? What demons are behind those things? And you put it on, you buy it. Do you know that you have brought the demonic spirit into your life? So this is one thing that is happening right now. The, the devil has become has become advanced. It is the same scheme, but he has become advanced in his ways. So you as a child of God, you must be discerning. Recently, somebody called my sister and talked about um, it's more like a multi-level marketing business. And I have done multi-level marketing before, so I understand what it's all about. But then you talk about the multi-level marketing. You say, normally what do you talk about multi-level marketing is all about? When you get yourself involved in a particular business, uh, some kind of, you, you deposit some money involved, you get some people also registered in that kind of platform. Um, it moves you to, to the higher level as more people, as those people also they engage other people in, in, that same, in that same business, you get to higher level and so, it, so, so does, your, does your profit or your interest increase. Now, in this one, they bought it as a multi-level market. <laughs> Guys, my sister was telling me about this thing and I was listening to it. And the minute the person, it was a, it was a white lady for instance, for, for, for funny enough. And then she said, when you get to this level, the day you want to get, you want to, you want to register yourself, you must be to you on the same day. Those are spiritual covenants, if you don't know. Now, the next thing is when you get to the level, this first step, you get to the point of the first level is the point of fire. Then she says when you move to the next level, it's not when you talk about air. And when you move to the next level, it's not about fire. Is it um, Agula? Is it star? Something that has to do with all these zodiac signs, but the final thing has to do with water. And then the only thing that came to my spirit when I heard it was this is a witchcraft platform. Every person, every individual that signs up, you think you are putting your money, you are ready. your money represents your life. Your money represents the destinies of your children, of your descendants. When you put your money in partnership with such things, you have put, you have converted your finances with the devil and with the demons behind it. So if you are not sensitive, these are ways why the devil can bring in poverty into your family. Why the devil, you think you are trying to get these things to be wealthy, but you have already put, put an atmosphere of satanic spirit. And before you know it, some people don't begin to find out that they begin to see themselves in different, in the different groups, in the water, in different places. You are wondering why do those things open up in your life? These are spiritual activities. These are things that demonic activities that take place everywhere. Even in office places, things like this happen everywhere. So as a child of God, you must be careful. So don't just buy the book, this kind of this book and just read it. You need to be able to identify areas in your life that these things have had access. Whether you've done it, maybe or maybe you've heard someone talk about it. 
Maybe you'll hear people talk about it in different social media platforms, talking about, oh, law of attraction. Those are witchcraft activities. Those are demonic activities. Do not expose your soul, your spirit, your life, your destiny, your family, your journey with your own descendants to stop things. Because the reason why God wants to come into your life, why to his son, Jesus Christ, he that he may go be generational. So the devil too is also working in God's own way. He will know that by the time he comes in contact with you, through you, he will have access to your entire family and the descendants. That is what he has done with the ancestors before. And now he's trying to establish it with you. So please, my brothers and sisters, be very careful, be very sensitive. Do not fall to the scheme of the enemy, even at this time. Do not fall to the scheme of the enemy, even at this time. Be very careful and be very sensitive in this period. Because there is so much that the Lord wants us to know about. There is so much that the Lord wants to teach us. But we need to know how to, how to walk in the path of the Lord and not expose ourselves to satanic transactions. So here, you must be careful about what you agree to or what you say yes to. Sometimes so we have to be very, in, 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 in page 49, from the top, it says we have to be very careful about what we sign up for. What are you signing up for in your office place? They say this is the custom in the office. Is it according to God's word? I know some people, they have said, I, I know some people, they have told them in the office place, you have, I know someone, in that he this person is a man of God. He is a man of God. He prays. And yet in his office, when he applied for a job, one part of part of the part of the, part of the ritual that they went through, they said it's part of the, the test that they go through to be able to come into the office. They had to do fire and told them to jump over the fire. Those are demonic covenants they are making with satanic spirits and this person did that is a, and he's a man of god what are the things that they have been, they have told you in your workplace that they say people that work here you have to be able to dress like this why is it why you walk out of dressing if it's if it's something that is you have to know if it's something that is of the spirit of god or if it's something that is of demonic act, act of the demonic covenant you must be discerning and be very careful so on this platform, all I'm doing through this process of this series is to open your eyes, your spirit, your mind to things and patterns by which the enemy gains access to you, to your family that you are not aware of. So that you will be able to come before the Lord and say, God, I remember this, oh Lord, I remember this, and I begin to repent and renounce them. Now, here he says, in this kind of thing, I said, I wonder how many people we are excited to do the eye pocket challenge. How many people have excited to get in the in just like what was told to my sister about that um, uh, investment opportunity? How many people have gotten involved in that? So many people have heard about it and have gotten involved. But guess what? They do not know that they have all gotten involved in demonic attack. Even political political societies. I remember when when at a point they um the, the president, the recent president of, of Nigeria, they have a political party and then um, they had a family friend who manages their, their things and everything, who manages what they do and we are supposed to be a part of it. I, only, I simply only went for one meeting, one meeting. Then I found out that every single time I find I myself in the gardens of soft women. Then the Lord began to tell me, Many of such gatherings, they are not just political parties. They are actually societies of, of the spirits. Because those people, you do not know who they are involved with. That is why when it comes to political parties, you must be careful. Any kind of sorority, any kind of club, be careful. Ask the Holy Spirit, God, is this club of you? Do you want me to be a part of this? It sounds nice. It seems like they are just playing football. It seems like they are just watching. I have been in a group. It's a prayer group. It's a prayer group. But then the Lord began to open my to open our eyes to see demonic attack. The, the day my sister and I decided to leave that group for for more than a year, these people kept coming with demonic attack. Even the church did not ask me to step out of. They just leaving that church for months, they were coming back to back, night after night, with demonic attacks. 
So do not just say, oh, because it's a church and they call the name Jesus Christ. Everybody, everybody, Jesus said, so many will call on the name God, God, but on that day he will say, I have not known you because they are not of him. My brothers and sisters, the time of tribulation, according to what the Lord has taught me, if I have a video that talks about um, the Lord told me to do a 40 days fast in 2018. And in that, during that process of fasting, the Lord, the only thing the Lord was asking me to seek him, for us to ask him to seek him concerning his next move on the earth. I have it, I have I have that video on my on, on this platform. I, I perhaps I will link it so that you can watch it. And the Lord talked about the next move was tribulation. So even the COVID-19 and all the things that everyone is expecting, experiencing around the world is part of the tribulation. Most people have been taught in church that tribulation is after the rapture. Tribulation has begun just so that you know. It has begun already. Because just like the people thought that the, that, that the Messiah was going to come after, after Elijah, Elijah didn't come as Elijah, Elijah came as John the Baptist. So the pattern that you think that the, the things of the Spirit, His will are not our ways. The things that are going on right now, here are tribulations of the church. Tribulations that are going on against God's children. So you are the child of God, do you want to care for The devil knows that his time is almost up. So he's going to do every single thing to get anyone that is available. And if you can't get them, he's trying to kill them. So here, the computer, he says, the question may be asked, what if someone did this challenge, or did any of all these things, enter into any of all these groups, any of all these things, perhaps as you are listening now, God is bringing to your remembrance some things that you are involved with. And you are thinking, that what if I did it innocently, not knowing his true origin? But guess what? Bible says that ignorance is not an excuse. That someone does not know that there is that there is, there is um, there, 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 that that does not agree with the force of gravity does not mean that is the the, the the principles behind the force of gravity will not affect that person when the person throws themselves from a from a high power. The fact that someone does not know that some kind of um, um, laws have been played or spiritual laws have been played or some kind of spiritual things have been done in this environment does not mean that when that person shows up, some, some things will not affect their lives. So the answer, he says that the answer is whether you did it consciously or unconsciously, is where did it fit in the word of God? Any of those things, can you find it in the word of God and say that, oh, Jesus did something like that, or Jesus said it is okay? Where did it fit your knowledge of Jesus Christ? The world will never bring anything holy to the church. You never bring anything holy to the child of God. The world will never bring anything holy to the church. I even know someone that will talk about saying, oh, that um, they have a church where they pray for the dead, maybe they are dead family members, they keep seeing them and this is not a demonic spirit. I will say once a man dies his judgment immediately. Those people that you think you're talking to that are, that you think you're talking to that are actual that you think that are Spirit of dead, of dead relative, of dead, family, of dead associate, of family members, or, or spouses. Those are demonic spirits. Yeah, it is not your relative. They are demonic spirits. So that you know that as believers, we should be sensitive to the spirits lead to the to the, and talk about the, spirit, the lead of the Holy Spirit. When anything of the world is introduced to us, we should be able to discern it. Just like when this person came. And talked about something about it's a business proposition, multi level marketing, business investment. But God is able to open our spirit, my, our spirit and our eyes to know that these things are demonic societies. The devil has been learning how to tweak, how to make things in such a way that without you knowing as a child of God, you will be exposed to so many of those things without even realizing the things that you have exposed yourself to. So we should be sensitive. When anything of the world is introduced to us, we should be able to discern the truth and say no. One thing that I have learned this period that the Lord has taught us seriously, learn not to be sentimental. Learn not to be sentimental when it involves something that has to do with your life and your destiny. Do not say, oh, he's a family friend or he's a business partner. I don't want to make them, I don't want to offend them. The devil does not care about how you feel when he decides to come after your child's destiny. He doesn't care. When those people in demonic society decide to go and raise up satanic altars against you to destroy your life or to wipe your entire family out, 
They do not think of sentiment or your relationship with them. So I am advising you, do not be sentimental. Your life and your destiny, you cannot place on sentimental values. You must learn to make of the Bible say your yes be your yes and your no be your no. Learn to say no to certain things. Learn to say no to things that involves your destiny. Whenever the enemy wants to bring things against things that, are, that will affect your destiny, learn to say no to them and do not be afraid. Now we see that we have the Holy Spirit. That's why you must spend time in the Word of God to know what you have and to be able to know the, the Spirit that that works with you. Instead, say yes. It's for saying yes. And instead of saying yes, I'm, I'm suffering the consequences later on. I've learned not to get myself involved with unnecessary warfare. I don't want to be, and maybe a particular meeting is going on and the Lord said, don't go. I don't bother myself to pray. Can I not pray? I can pray. Can I not fast? Can I not find that can't have those things? I can. But the Lord said, do not go. I do not bother to go there because I do not want to get involved with unnecessary spiritual warfare. If there is no need for it, I do not bother myself to get involved in it. So you as an individual must learn the same. Here is our spiritual identity as the children of God. Here is our spiritual identity as the children of God. So here you must let to know this particular chapter. If you can, we talk about Halloween. Why you should not be involved in Halloween? So people go around and doing Halloween, and they are children of God. You do not know that these things are opening doors to satanic spirit in your life. Tomorrow you find out. It's when you you ask yourself why are things happening in life for my family? It can be a door that you have opened. I, I remember this family even going to the marketplace to, to get cosmetics and different things and the Lord showed me a particular lipstick that I got. And the Lord showed me that lipstick. I said that this thing has some, there's something attached to it. And I bought it. I bought other makeup. I bought different things. But the Lord looks like it's a lipstick. So I learned when I'm going food, to go food shopping, I'm going to do shopping for clothes or any other accessories. Any other necessities in the home, I learned to act with the Holy Spirit. Lead me to your own place. Lead me to the person or the people to buy for that you have ordained for me. Maybe there will be no satanic transactions and there will be no transference of spirit. Holy Spirit, lead me to the right store, to the right market, to the right individual to buy things from, full stop for. I always ask the Holy Spirit, and when I come back, I sanctify everything that I have, renouncing any evil, evil transactions that have been done on them. So that, because when you consume those, to use them on your body, you must make sure that there are no ungodly spirits attached to them. So here, this video, I don't want to. I know that I'm taking a bit longer than usual. Bible says here, it says in Matthew chapter ten, verse thirty-two to thirty-four. He says, therefore, anyone, everyone who confesses, anyone who confesses me, Jesus died before me, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before me, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. This is Matthew chapter 10, chapter 10, verse 32 to 34. And here the God is talking about saying, saying that you must learn as a child of God to stand for what is of the truth and not be sentimental to say because you do not want to seem offensive to someone else then you you agree to things that can actually be against the will of God God said if you do not stand for me I will deny you before the heavenly fire in Matthew 10 37 to 39 again he says he who loves Lost father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who lost son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You get into relationships. You get into things oh, because I don't want. I don't want to offend my mother, my father or mother. I don't want to offend this family member. Did Jesus tell you to get involved in those things? When you pray, did the Holy Spirit tell you, or you go watch movies or listen to things just so that they don't see that they are too holy? I will say, guard your salvation with with with. with with, with godly weapons, guard your heart, guard your soul, guard your eye gate, your mouth gate, your ear gate, guard the gate of your soul, so that these things do not open, these things do not have access to you. The devil just need one access, doesn't need to happen to her just once. 
Now God is saying that if you say because of these people or people around you, you do not do what they're supposed to do, you are denying Christ. So you as a child of God, you must be careful what to get yourself involved with. You must be careful what you are exposed to. You must be very, very careful. He says here in, in Matthew 10, 37 to 39, he who loves father or mother, he who loves job, he who loves husband, who loves family, children more than me. He said that person is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross daily and follow after me is not worthy of me. What are the responsibilities that God has put in your heart to do every day? Pray for your family. Study the word of God. Spend time to speak God's word. Maybe for that colleague or even to what I told you, step away from this thing. And you are saying that God, if I need the job, if I need the job, I don't have any other thing. Guess what? You love that job more than you love Jesus. You love that association more than you love Jesus. He's telling you today, step away. Look, the God has plenty. God, the Bible says the entire world belongs to Him. The abundance that you need can only come from Him. The deliverance, the salvation that you need can only come from Him, but you need to trust Him to help you. Except you, in my life, I, I, I learned to burn my bridges. I know God has told me I needed to work this part, but something else is still getting my attention. It, it happened to me with my job. I'm used to getting paid salary every month, but God told me to start up a business and so many things were happening. And then the Lord said talking to me about these things. And so the Lord said talking to me about all these things. When the Lord told me those things, I had to learn to burn my bridges. Everything that was going to take me back to that job, I had to make up my mind to cut it off. Not today, there is a difficulty. I say, oh, I need to bring out my resume. Or I need to go apply for another new job. You know what? Many of us will do that when it comes to God. So you see things happening. God is telling you, I need you to step away from this relationship. I need to step away from this man, this woman, this boy, this, this man you are holding on to, thinking as a boyfriend or even a, a particular relationship. God is telling you to leave this, this association, this relationship. This group, this business, this business investment, God is saying, step away. I think people, oh God, if I leave now, this is going to happen. Perhaps God knows that in the next three hours, in the next day, in the next few days, or next month, something terrible is going to happen. And if you can obey quickly and act quickly on his instruction, you will be delivered. The lives of many associated with you will be delivered. So the Lord is teaching us to learn how to stand for Him. Say together, let us regain our spiritual understanding and get back to the cause of Jesus. Let us get back to the cause of Jesus. We have led on our guards in so many ways. But today He said, I've come to bring good news with a loving hand. I am willing to be the only one to address the elephant in the room. I would rather be, I would rather have you mad at me than not to make it to heaven. And that is what I'm being with you today, just as this man of God is speaking here. So many men of God will not tell you this thing because they would rather they are thinking, I don't want this person to be mad at me. But I would rather tell you the truth. It may affect my relationship with you, but I would rather tell you the truth because guess what? There's a cloud of witnesses watching. There's a cloud of witnesses watching in heaven, both on the side of God and the side of the enemy to see if I will do the right thing, if I will tell you the truth. And one day God will ask me, we play the same scene and we say, we play the scene of this thing and then God will say, did you tell them the truth? Did you tell them the truth? And that's why on this platform I share only what the Lord tells me to share. I will not do it on my flesh. The day the Lord does not tell me something to share, I will not come out at all. Because your destiny belongs to Jesus. And only He can perfect that which concerns you. I understand that there are struggles, and there are struggles the Lord Jesus Christ is working on in every individual, in your home, in your family. I understand that. But guess what? Even in our own personal life, there are challenges that I face day by day. Every single day I'm questioning, but I learned to stick with the Lord, just like this person here is talking about. 
He has learned to speak to the Lord. Say, I have learned to live on God's word. I have learned to live on God's principles and His promises. They have never ever failed me. And no devil can do anything about that. Guess what? I have learned that too. I have learned to stand on God's word. I have learned to stand on God's principles. Do you think I do not sit and I sleep and I do not see some kind of attack but I'm wondering where did this come from? But then when I wake up, I hear the Lord say to me, the devil has nothing on you. Does it mean that the following day, the attack will not come again? Will it come? When God has talked, talked to this platform, God has talked about, and through many meetings, when God has talked about learning to be on the offensive and not only on the defensive. Learning how to be spiritually alert and guarded in such a way that the devil does not have access to your lives. So that is how we have to learn to learn to learn to be managers of God's house. Learn how to manage to take God's house. Take, manage your home. Manage your relationship. Manage your family. Have no mercy on this on this satanic spirit. Do not say, oh, this is my cry for all of us right now who call ourselves ministers or people of the God is that you may come up and talk the truth about God's word. Do not say, oh, because my pastor will say this, or people will talk to me about this. Do not care what people say. Your focus is to come out of such demonic bondages first. And make sure that your family is safe. Let Jesus help you today. Look here, I can't go through this, these things, but I see here that there are actually prayers of spiritual battle. You can turn prayers of spiritual battle from page um, 56 and 57. It teaches you how to pray, to stand on the, on, on the offensive, come against every attack of the enemy, any access point. Be a champion in Christ Jesus. Or be a champion in Christ Jesus. Let to honor your father and your mother. Let to honor your family. Let to walk in God's path and, 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 and promises. And let the Holy Spirit help you through this chapter to bring, to pull down all the things that is not of God. So I don't know, as you listen, perhaps there is something that you have noticed, something that you have observed. Please, I would like to hear your own part. I would like to hear your own testimony. If you can, please leave a comment. What is the thing that you have noticed that is happening as a child of God, as an individual? Kindly share with all of us. We would like to know about it so that we can be a part of God together. We can, we can grow as the body of Christ. We can build. What are the other schemes? Well, perhaps there are things here that I have been mentioned that you know that there are even more things. Please share on, on the comment section so that everyone who reads, so that everyone who says, write the vision and make it clear, so that everyone who reads, we see and run with it. Write, share with us so that whatever we see, all of us can be equipped as the body of Christ, fully loaded as children of God, and then we know how to deal with things in the name of Jesus. So I want you to just read this prayer point on um, page 61 at the end of it. He said, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for my victory and your promises because through these prayers I stand on the offensive by the power of the Holy Spirit that lies at least in me and the anointing that you place upon my life. Today, I am a champion in Jesus Christ. So today I want to pray for you. If you are a part of, if you are here and you have not given your life to Christ, I want to ask you to say these prayers with me. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I have listened to all these things. And there are so many things going on in my life. Come into my life today. Come and deliver me from all of these things. Let your blood speak for me today before your court. In the name of Jesus. Come into my life and be the Lord of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help me to live a life worthy of that which you did for me on the cross of Calvary. In Jesus' name. Today I pray for you. Father Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. As they have heard, as they have listened, let the word of God break roots in their life and begin to produce results. Come and water the word of God in their heart by your Holy Spirit and with your presence in the name of Jesus. Father, everyone that needs the mercy of God, that needs faith, that needs patterns and cycles to be changed in their life, to let the whole of the enemy be broken of their family be broken, of their business be broken, of their minds, of their emotions. Let me put the, 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 the blood of Jesus.
Jesus says that the doctors of their mind, the doctors of their soul, their spirit, and we destroy every work of darkness from the root of their life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father Lord. We bless your holy name. So, my brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining. If you have, if you need any advice or anything, please share in the comment section of prayer. Just share in the comment section. We would love to hear. God bless you and thank you so much for joining.